Mike Parallack here to talk to you. Liberals love when you make them demigods. Bill Maher comes to mind. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying a little experiment here. I'm going to tell you what Bill Maher's problem is and why. And he is the ultimate hypocrite as a demigod. This is a... Uh, I'm going to possibly do this as a series where it's going to be kind of like a, journal, a YouTube journal entries. <clears throat> and this will be the first one where I'm going to tell you what Bill Maher's problem is and why he is the ultimate hypocrite as a demigod for his liberal followers. There was a time I thought Bill Maher was pretty smart guy. I grew up watching Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher. What attracted to me to that show, although I didn't catch every episode, I, 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 but what attracted to me to that show was uh, the diverse panel of people. There was always people on there, I, at least one person on there I knew, you know, maybe a couple I was vaguely aware of and one I didn't know at all. But in many ways you could say that Bill Maher was an intellectual hero for me in upbringing. Bill Maher made a documentary film once called Religious. Happen to own a copy of it. Um, I bought for $3.19 <laughs> years ago. Um, and when I opened it up just now before I started doing this video, I realized there are notes in here, it's a common practice that I do, uh, that, I, that I took when I watched this, judging by the notes... My educated guess would be I watched, I sat and watched this back in 2012. <clears throat> so the reason I'm able to guesstimate that I've watched this movie, Religious, Bill Maher, in 2012 is because the notes in here is, uh, I got a note to myself to ask uh, a person's name, I'm not going to say the person's name on here, uh, a question. and the, But the person's name was the person who was the pastor at the church that I started going to years ago, um, and the fact that I'm writing this down as a question for this person is tells me that obviously this was when I first started attending that church in 2012. So I wrote a note to myself, as someone who makes a living uh, elevating the concept of faith as a good thing, how would you respond to one that makes that may call you an intellectual slaveholder, keeping humankind in bondage and being uh, subserviently supporting the argument of, excuse me, subsequently supporting an argument with the hope of, for the hope of rapture. Boy, that's a beautiful... <laughs> reading something I wrote back in 2012 here. But in the film, he basically calls the act of having faith as a neurological disorder that gives comfort when trying to make sense out of mass death and justify wishing for it. Obviously, some. If I wrote all that, that must be what something he said in this document, in this documentary. But this is why he's such a hypocrite, and I'm going to explain now what what I mean by that. <clears throat> I haven't watched this movie since, but I do remember a lot. His fundamental argument in the movie, especially towards the end of the film, where he's going like this, and you know, um. He's not comfortable with people in our government, the, the fact that there are people in our government who believe in a talking snake. You know, being, being condescending when he says it. Based, obviously referencing the story of the, you know, the Garden of Edith and Adam and Eve in, in uh, Genesis. Bill's fundamental argument in this film is basically that. <laughs> and that faith is a neurological disorder. What Bill fails to understand is, I, I didn't know this at the time, you know, back in 2012, but the Bible is basically God's word uh, trying to communicate with lesser beings, us. 
Bill doesn't understand this because he is enjoying being a demigod to liberals. He's because of his position and all his, the people that follow his, his his way of thinking and everything. He's able to enrich himself and enjoy his demigod lifestyle. You know, having fun with his wacky tabacky. But who am I? Who am I? I'm not in the business of judge judging. I'm not in that business. I'm not the arbiter of judgment. And this is why he's a hypocrite. He's a demigod who will not acknowledge the fact that he's a demigod. I recall in the film, he also uh, his, uh, admits to be ta being taken back a bit. I forget exactly what, it's, what he says in, in the film, but he admits to being uh, taken back by the whole trinity and water thing. The fact that water comes in three forms, a liquid, gas, solid. <laughs> And there's another uh, scene in, in the movie where he's actually talking to a group of Christians who, what I recall, act like a real Christian should. They, uh, they pray, uh, uh, Dear Jesus, help Bill find answers to his questions. Something that, you know, uh, um, a true, Christ, true, true group of Christians would do for someone like Bill Maher. But I can't help but acknowledge my small little role um, in uh, Bill Maher's becoming a demigod. Uh, my my me being to blame in part because uh, of because he was my intellectual hero in upbringing. So I just like to say on a public platform, sorry to the god that I made that I for my role in making Bill Maher a demigod. Along with, <laughs> yeah, um, but my role is probably uh, insignificant because again, who the hell am I, anyways? You know, and uh, <clears throat> but that basically is spoiler alert: the basic message of his movie, Religious. Uh, the act of having faith is a neurological disorder. And he's not comfortable with people working in our government who believe in a talking snake. <laughs> Apparently, the word metaphor is not in Bill, Ma Bill Maher's cap vocabulary. <laughs> Too much wacky tobacco, baby. <laughs> okay, I just remembered one more thing about a, a notation I took and, and put it in here. Uh, from back from 2012. Um, if the act of humbling oneself to the perception of an all-powerful, all-knowing God is good, can it not be argued that the act of doubt of such a God's existence is the most humbling act of all? And this is, uh, now, now I remember, I was listening to something on uh, radio where they were talking about if you don't, if you have no doubt, you have no intelligence, and intelligence itself is a gift from God. That was my two cents when I watched this movie back in 2012. But anyways, fast forward to today. Now, <clears throat> Bill Maher still got his little circle of seal-like loyalists. Orf, 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 orf. <laughs> <laughs> and is that real time shows? I admit I uh, check out clips from time to time uh, just to keep up w with what uh, the liberal mindset is today. <laughs> now, um, I have uh, 131 subscribers now. Uh, a little over a year ago it was only 47. So, if I'm going to do these journal, YouTube journal entries like this. I'm going to have to be 100%, uh, well, not that I haven't <laughs> been real before, but I'm going to be 100% uh, real with you right now. I had an unorthodox upbringing. I was probably the only per person in the world who watched Politically Correct with Bill Nahr, Maher, SNL, uh, Planet Live, and then woke up the next morning to watch uh, the Incredible Hulk cartoon. <laughs> The one where Lou Ferrigno did the voice of the Hulk in the 90s. <laughs> and uh, when that was over, I changed, I switched to NBC and watched uh, um, Beat the Press, which at the time I recall there was a heavyset uh, gentleman with brown hair who hosted the show at that time. But I would probably say I'm probably the only kid that actually did that. <laughs> 
but I did have an uh, unorthodox uh, upbringing. Uh, maybe I was making up for a childhood or lack thereof um, that I didn't uh, experience traditionally. Maybe that's why I like the show Family Ties so much, especially the relationship between Alex P. Keaton and the little brother Andy. <laughs> I remember one episode where the kid runs in, runs into the kitchen from the living room. Alex, Alex, the stock market dropped ten, ten points. And Alex looks at the parents. Thank you for having him. <laughs> but I, the, the dynamics of that relationship was so awesome to me. Um, there's a word for that. I, 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 my junior college guidance counselor told me it once. I don't remember what she said, but it was, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into the psychology of it here in this video, just to say that I had an unorthodox upbringing, only to say that for, my, for mine and my sister's survival, living with a male feminist narcissist, my father, I had to think like an adult when I was technically a child, so uh, I would think like a child when I was technically on the road to growing up and becoming an adult. And like Forrest Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so I'll just end uh, um, with a, uh, an anecdote. Um, uh, there's something happened to me at my other job the other day. <laughs> I just you know, you you think you you, you understand uh, uh, women, and then <laughs> so I was talking with a coworker the other day, and uh, somehow the subject came to politics, and I ended up tell oh, and I, and I ended up telling him a joke that the joke I already shared there on this channel, one of the jokes I already shared about Kamala Harris, <laughs> and if she were president, or no, if, if Joe Biden is the uh, is the uh, establishment's puppet then that makes uh, Kamala Harris the dummy. <laughs> and this person is like, hey, I like Kamala. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, uh, I'll say at least she didn't start preaching about girl power and that crap. You know? But uh, she just uh, uh, started talking about uh, we need change, which I agree. The fact that uh, she mentioned that and didn't go into the whole girl power preaching thing means that that's good. She's probably uh, potentially on the road to becoming an intelligent woman. But she did admit that she wanted to vote but never voted and seemed amazed when I told her that I've been voting in every major election since I was 18 years of age. And she was noticing, I could tell she was like astonished by this. <laughs> Incidentally, the person I'm talking about is not one of the kids that work there. It's a person of legal age. <laughs> for the record. But I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> because uh, at first, that that's what it was. We were also talking about, because I had made a shot about, uh, she was going on about Mexico's got a president, got a female president, and now they're doing great. And I said, I highly doubt that, unless, they're did, unless they've abolished the cartel. <laughs> Next thing I know, she comes up to me, what did you say about the cartel? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> So I go, this is the funny part. I go on my break. I come back from my break. <laughs> She's all nice. And I, Mike, I, I, I cleaned your workstation for you. <laughs> what, the, what the hell? <laughs> uh, female nature, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'll just send this one uh, with another Kamala Harris joke. This isn't mine. I guess we got got this from uh, conservative comedian JP. Yeah, Kamala Harris. Her laugh is so infectious. You know, kind of like AIDS. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, uh, one more thing I want to mention: the the somebody a coworker also mentioned to me about uh, if Kamala were to become president, uh, the odds are of her being assassinated uh, are pretty good because uh, race ist speaking code now. Rednecks <laughs> are probably better have better aim. <laughs> um, I guess they, I guess uh, uh, rednecks who I guess wanted a woman president, but they would have preferred like a Nikki Haley or something. <laughs> Someone with a more uh, uh, Caucasian descent. <laughs>
<laughs> and when, when when this person initially told me the, the concept of Kamala being uh, uh, assassinated, I admit I, I did. Um, I I was uh, susceptible. I am susceptible to sin. I am a sinner, sinner just like anyone else. I did experience a moment momentary um, joy at the thought. <laughs> Moment, just momentarily, <laughs> but then I am susceptible to sin, just like everybody else. Okay, one more thing, and then this is uh, already too long. I don't want if I'm going to do this, it's not going to even be this long. I'll keep it under ten minutes. But at lunch at work today, I killed a fly <laughs> in the break room. Literally, wouldn't leave me alone. I was trying to eat my my uh, my. Uh, um, um, hamburger helper or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, would so it landed like right here, and I, and I got it, <laughs> and it got me thinking of uh, human beings who disregard God. Thank you, fly. <laughs> In your death, you uh, <laughs> brought up an interesting point. <laughs> We all can't be demigods like Bill Maher here on a grand scale, but I guess we can be our own little demigods in our own little worlds. <laughs> Mike Parallax, thank you for your time.